Hey, what's up? This is DJ Thunderhead. Definitely stay tuned to the top of the next hour. Killer interview with Andreas Kisser from the band Sepultura. It was a great honor to interview this band. And uh, one of my favorite bands as well. DJ Thunderous is going to have a lot of great questions for him. But right now, stay tuned. We're going to start off with the first track. It's off of their last album, Machine Messiah. It's going to be the title track, Machine Messiah. Crank it up.
Hey, what's up? This is DJ Thunderous. I'm happy to be here with Andreas from Sepultura. How you doing, man? Hey, great. It's great to be here talking to you guys. It's awesome to talk to you. For the listeners out there, can you give us a brief rundown on how the band formed and how it is led to you where it is now? It's just amazing. Yeah, Sepultura was formed back in 1985, uh, basically at the end of 1984, where they played the first co concert or show um, uh, in Brazil, in a city called Belo Horizonte. Uh, it was formed by Max, Igor, Cavalera, and then Paulo Jr. and Jairo, uh, which was the, the, the first formation. They record two albums with that, Bestial Devastation and Morbid Visions. And then I joined the band, uh, Andreas Kissel, in 1987. Uh, we did uh, the album Schizophrenia together for the first time together with that lineup. With that album, we got uh, our deal, our contract with Roadrunner Records that um, uh, we signed at the end of 1988. And then in 1989, we put out the, the album Beneath the Remains. That was our first worldwide release by a, uh, a label that put it out everywhere. And uh, in, in 89, we already had uh, the chance to... To, to tour outside Brazil for the first time in Europe with Sodom uh, and then in the United States with Fate or Fear. We went all over the places and uh, and then really Sepultura got, uh, started to, to be known, you know, outside Brazil and, and everywhere. And then, you know, we did Arise and Chaos AD and Roots, which were really, I think, uh, on Chaos AD especially, you know, in 1994, I think we, we found our, our sound, you know, we started using the, the percussion from Brazil, you know, the different rhythms that uh, Brazil has. Uh, the music got a little more groovier, uh, not as, as fast as, as the, as Milita Remains and Arise. And of course, the roots we really develop uh, and explore those sounds from Brazil uh, even further, you know. And Max left the band in 1996 uh, in the middle of the roots tour. We got Derek Green to record against, um, and then we changed drummers. You know, Igor left in 2006 after the recording of Dante 21st, and um, and then we got uh, Gian Dolabella on drums, which we did like uh, two albums together. We did Alex and then Kairos, which was the first album we signed with Nuclear Blast in 2011, 2010, 2011. And um, and in 2011 we got a new drummer like uh, on uh, Eloy Casagrande, which is the actual lineup. And we did three albums with this lineup: Mediator, and then uh, Machine Messiah, and now the new album Quadra. Awesome! He's a killer drummer too. I hear everyone saying out there, "Wow, he's just oh, excellent!" Oh yeah, he's Holy, amazing! Wow, yeah. so fantastic! Yeah, and you're an awesome person too. You're an awesome guitarist. Thank you. Say that. What are your personal <laughs> music interests, and what got you into music? Yeah, at the house, you know, my mom and dad used to listen all types of music, you know. My mom could play a little accordion, but my grandma was the one who had an acoustic guitar, you know. She came from Slovenia to Brazil after the Second World War, and she could sing really amazing folk songs, you know, from Slovenia and Austria and Germany. Uh, and actually, I started uh, learning the guitar with her acoustic guitar. And um, and that's how I, I started, you know, having interest in with music. Of course, it was about the same time I was listening, you know, starting to listen to Queen and Kiss. The first two bands are, you know, I started listening to, to heavy music and stuff. And then, uh, of course, I were made, uh, you know, Death Leopard, Judas Priest and Black Sabbath and all that, you know, Metallica, Slayer. And, uh, and then I started to play <coughs> electric guitar and... Uh, and I never had like a, a lesson on electric guitar. I always have uh, um, classes of uh, acoustic and classical guitar, which I study as much as I can, you know, mm -hmm. still today. But uh, the electric guitar was really by ear, you know, playing the, the bands that I like and uh, I admire and I, I learned so much and trained my ear, you know, doing that uh, process of putting the tape or the, the vinyl and, you know, starting trying to learn the songs by ear and stuff, you know, it was great. And uh, and that's how I developed my, my guitar sound, you know, and my guitar technique, having classes of classical music and just listening to the music I like as well. That's cool. Now, when you switched over to heavier music, did, you know, your grandma like that? Did she, jam, did she like, jam with you? Uh, not really. No? <laughs> she, <laughs> she probably... Well, I mean, yeah, she, she did uh, have, you know, she knew, like, three or four chords and stuff, oh, you know. Okay. and. Uh, 
she couldn't really she she know the sets of songs are there that she she would like to do but uh, unfortunately we didn't have uh, uh, the opportunity to jam <laughs> uh, well that's too bad but she sounds really cool and it sounds like you have quite a musical family yeah pretty much yeah they, they we always like music at the house you know even though my mom and dad couldn't really play that you know mm-hmm. my dad could play anything you know my mom could play a little accordion and stuff but yeah. uh, we listen to music all the time all right. Can you give us a list of your top ten bands personally? What do you think are your favorites? Um, well, it's um, it's hard to tell, but uh, I mean, uh, Kiss and Queen were really important, you know, in the beginning. Uh, Queen came down to Brazil in 1981. I couldn't go because I was too young, mm-hmm. and uh, and Kiss came down in 1983 to Brazil, and that was my first big show. You know, Creatures of the Night tour. You know, was amazing experience, and that changed my life really. You know that. Basically, that's why I'm here, you know, uh, playing guitar and doing the stuff that I'm doing, you know. But uh, Kiss and Queen, of course, you know. And then uh, Black Sabbath, I think, is my favorite band. You know, the, the beginners, you know, the root of everything. Yeah. Uh, Metallica, uh, of course, you know, another revolutionary band, you know, that showed a different way of doing music without losing aggressiveness, you know, having uh, uh melody and, and slow paced songs and stuff like that, you know. So uh no wonder, you know, they're the biggest band in the world nowadays, you know. I mm. mean uh, they're great. So um what else? Judas Priest, you know, also was a big influence uh on my music, especially KK Dowen and Glenn Timpton, you know, the way they communicate between the two guitars, you know, it's amazing. Uh Motorhead of course, you know, is uh I think an influence everyone that is in this business, you know, okay. especially the way they they portray they they were very honest you know all the time with their music and uh and you know they inspired so many people and we have the privilege you know to tour with motorhead so many times lamey jam with us a few times you know was you know it was just a privilege you know to to know that band so closely you know so um how many bands did i say already One, two three four five. you got six how about slayer i know you're you know definitely into slayer definitely slayer yeah, yeah. i mean slayer Without Slayer, it wouldn't be a Sepultura, you know, I'll say. I mean, uh, the style and the, the kind, type of a direction that we followed, you know, I think Slayer was a big part of it, you know, and uh, and it's good, great to see that they came out, you know, you know, probably their biggest big, biggest momentum in their career, you know, they are, really did an amazing farewell tour, you know. We had the, the opportunity to, 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 I should have the opportunity to see that show at the Rock in Rio Festival last year. It was the last time they played in Brazil, you know, so... Uh, Yes, Slayer definitely uh, on my list. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, three more. Come on, you can do it. Three more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of bands, you know. It's like a really hard to... But, uh, you know, outside metal, uh, I have to, you know, I'd like to put like um, a new model army. You know, new model army is a band from England that... Uh, all the acoustic stuff really inspired Sepultura a lot. Mm-hmm. And of course, their lyrics, you know, their melody, um, it's very unique, you know, it's very powerful. We recorded The Hunt on the album Chaos AD, you know, a cover from New Model Army. So I think New Model Army is a really important band for Sepultura that uh, really showed, you know, new possibilities to, to our music as well, you know. So uh, uh, what else? Um, uh, I, I I love yes as well. You know the more progressive songs, music. Uh, Stevie Howe is one of my biggest uh, idols. You know uh, uh, his music, his acoustic stuff, and his folk influence, his classical influence. Rick Wakeman, of course. You know and and Chris Squire. You know uh, Bill Bruford. You know. Uh, uh, close to the edge, I think, for this uh, a masterpiece. You know, it's one of the the greatest album in rock and. And I, I love yes, you know, I follow them uh, since uh, since forever, basically, you know. Mm-hmm. I actually learned my first, uh, uh, you know, acoustic chords and stuff playing Stevie Howe, you know, trying to, to play Mood for a Day and all that acoustic stuff that he, he always did, you know. So, yes, was uh, also, uh, it is a big part of uh, what I am, you know, as a musician. You're a very and, uh, good musician. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And I have to say Ozzy Osbourne, you know, of uh, course I put Saba there, but Ozzy, you know, with his solo career, brought uh, to the world amazing guitar players, you know, starting with Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes was one of my biggest influences, you know, uh, uh, 
also with the classical music influence, the classical guitar that he brought to to, to the metal world and stuff, and and Blizzard of Oz and Die of a Madman are <clears throat> also two masterpieces, you know. And of course, Jakey Lee, you know, with yep. Bark and the Moon, um, and Zach Wilde, you know, even Brad Gills, you know, Speak of the Devil, you know, they, you know, Ozzy really need to have uh, a fantastic guitar player on his side, you know. Of course, Tonayomi was a fantastic guitar player, and uh, but I guess Ozzy really brought new elements to, to the heavy music uh, in his solo career, and of course was a, also a big influence on, on, on my musical, you know, uh, growing up and stuff. That's amazing to hear that. Have you, you've probably met quite a few of those people, I bet. Yeah, definitely. You know, I have the privilege, you know, to, to meet most of them, actually, you know, on tour and, and jamming or in Brazil, you know, when they came down to play. So um, it's fantastic. You know, it's such a privilege to have, uh, not only to have their music in, inspired in my career, but also to have that contact, you know, uh, with the people behind the music, you know, mm-hmm. which is great. That's excellent. Now, your band, Sepultura, now has a total of 15 releases. How many include you on them? Uh, I guess uh, 13. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm just not only on the first two albums, uh, Best of Devastation and Morbid Visions, or mm-hmm. the rest, I mean. Do, do you think you'll ever bring them back with you on them? Sorry? Do you think you'll bring them, you know, re-release them with you on them? Or no? No, I mean, uh, you mean re-record everything yeah. and stuff? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't see us doing that, you know, it's, it's really a sacrilege <laughs> in my yeah. point of view. Mm-hmm. I understand other bands that have different reasons, you know. I know you have like, you know, all this complicated bureaucratic contract situation and stuff that, that kind of obliged a few bands to re-record their early material and stuff. But, uh, fortunately we don't have this problem and I don't see artistically any, any reason to do something like that, you know. Yeah, something new and fresh seems to be working for you guys right now and that's amazing. I'm looking so forward to your release. Thank you, thank you. We are very anxious too. <laughs> so, how do you keep up with all of your projects? I know you have a side project and another band that you're in, and you do a radio show. How do you keep up with everything and be with family? And yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's all a matter of organization, really. You know, you 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 work in advance, the calendars and stuff, and it's not easy, but um, it's it's doable. You know, I think uh, I have so many great opportunities uh, to work with the amazing people. Not only in bands, but I have the radio show in Sao Paulo with my son, you know, Johan. He's 22 years old now, and we started this show like eight years ago. And uh, it's a great, fantastic uh, experience, you know. When I'm in Brazil, I, I do it live every Sunday. Uh, but uh, most of it, you know, I'm traveling and stuff. So I, I pre-record some shows when I'm in Brazil. Mm-hmm. And I also send, uh, you know, my, my shows from the road, you know, making interviews backstage with my friends and musicians and stuff. And, and I send my audio to Brazil and they, they put together and, and do, and do it the rest in Brazil with my son and everything, you know. So, uh, it's all about to really organize, organize your, your, your day, your, your week, whatever, you know, your schedule and stuff. And, and um and be and be respectful to that you know because mm-hmm. otherwise it would be a mess you know and we wouldn't be able really to achieve anything you know but uh, uh yeah it's not easy but uh, i wouldn't say you know no to so many great opportunities that i have and i i'm really grow up a lot you know with this uh, playing with different people and having different experiences like that that's amazing and i think that's really cool to have an artist like you being on a radio show because that's showing that you know there's so much appreciation out there for the metal scene and not yeah. only being an artist, but understanding what everyone else is going through. So do you think you learn from that as well? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, it's great, you know, uh, to do interviews uh, with younger bands or, or older bands of friends of mine. You know, they are in, in the scene for so many years. And, uh, and basically on my show, I open uh, the space, you know, and room for, for national Brazilian bands, you know, that uh, are so difficult to, to have an outlet to show their music or to talk about their lyrics or etc. you know. So uh, basically 80 to 90 percent of the, the bands are from Brazil. And, uh, and it's great, you know, because uh, that's one of the few places that they can show their, their, their work and stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, and um, I'm really happy that I have this opportunity really to open this uh, space for them, you know. 
That's really cool, and there's a lot of killer bands out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. No. Especially the younger generations, they are playing their instruments like never before, you know. They're mm -hmm. even better musicians now than in the past, you know. It's fantastic. That's cool. All right, let's talk about Quadro, which is dropping on February 7th. How long did it take to get it finalized? What, did, what was the process? And also, what's the meaning of the album name? Yeah, I mean, we started we're working like uh, 14 to 15 months ago uh, on Machine Messiah. Everything was done so quickly, you know, in the period of five to six months, we had to re write and record everything and stuff. So this time around, I wanted to have more time really to experiment more and, and listen back and change things, you know, and uh, just to make sure really we have the best of uh, the best to put on the album, you know, so... Uh, in that respect, we, we had more time really to develop the ideas and uh, um, so we, we were in Brazil doing the writing and the pre-production demo and stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and then we went to Sweden uh, to Stockholm to do the drums and then we went to a, a different town called Orebro where Jens Bogren, our producer, lives and have his home studio, a fantastic place. And we finished the, all the recording there. So it took like around six weeks for the recording. And then another two weeks to, to master, to mix and master everything. Jens Bogren did everything, you know, record and produce and mix and master. Uh, we kind of repeat the same process we used on the Machine Messiah, you know, and it was a great, a great uh, process. You know, we, we, we really had a lot of fun working on it. It was a very difficult album, of course, you know, but we were prepared, you know, technically and physically. And especially mentally, you know, really to, to face this challenge. And, uh, we're very happy with the result, you know, and, uh, and Quadra, you know, came from numerology. I think that was the, the, the basic, the, the root of the, the concept, you know, uh, like I said, like 14 to 15 months ago, I started to go after a direction, you know, try to find a, uh, a concept really that could really help us to, to build, uh, an album and music and etc. And, uh, and new numbers and, you know, numerology and algorithms are so, uh, popular, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, exactly. like, uh, what we see and what we hear, you know, all those uh, algorithms and through our social media and stuff. And so I started there, you know, with numbers and I found this book called Quadrivium. Uh, Quadrivium talks about the four liberal arts, you know, it's, uh, music, cosmology, geometry, and mathematics, you know, and uh, the number four there was very interesting, you know, they, they have the, the definitions of every number and the combinations and everything, right. so number four means the, the moment of manifestation where everything happens, you know, which is another definition of the present, of now, you know, the kairos, which is a subject that we always really strong in our, in our life, you know, and everything we do, we are here now, you know, not trapped in the past or not to anxiety to, to the future you know we're here now and uh that's the 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 main thing that drives sepultura you know so the number four was really the starting point and then came the name quadra uh, also inspired by geometry and stuff from the quadrivium and quadra is a portuguese name that means sports court you know uh mm -hmm. Uh, which by definition is a delimit delimited area where you have a set of rules where the game takes place, you know, and this is life itself. I mean, our countries, you know, Brazil or the United States or Japan or Russia, whatever, they all quadras, you know, different quadras with different sets of rules where we play a game and we play our life, let's say, you know, according to those rules. Uh, and in the end, I think uh, the, the, what quadra brings is uh, that we should respect the differences and not attack them, you know, because... Uh, we, it's not our fault we are what we are. We are just a, a, a victims or a consequence of our cultural baggage, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was born in a different country, not Brazil or Saudi Arabia or Iran or something, you know, I would have a totally different point of view of society, of women, of music, of sports or, or leisure time or work, you know, everything. Everything, you know? yeah. And, and it's not necessarily wrong, you know, it's just a different way of seeing the world and stuff and, and in the world of today, you know, this helps create stereotypes and phobias, you know, my God is better than yours, and uh, mm -hmm. my God is the only God, you know, and my country is better than yours, and all that stupidity that creates wars and all that crazy, 
uh, horrible, you know, situation. Yep, uh, and then you get the politics, and we won't even go there. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and what is communist, what is a fucking capitalist, what is Republican, what is Democrat, you know, it's all concepts, yep. you know, created by the human mind, and people die and kill for it, something that doesn't exist really, you know. It's just an agreement that, uh, uh, you know, same with money. I mean, that's the why we have the coin on the cover, you know. I mean, that's the first rule of survival, regardless of where you were born in this world, you know. Uh, you, you need money to be born, you need money to survive and to live, and you need money to die. Exactly. And money doesn't, and money doesn't exist, you know. You need at least two people to agree that the piece of paper have a certain value. And there you go, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then you have a piece of paper in your pocket, and tomorrow Donald Trump says another stupid thing in the press, and the, the value goes down, and you have the same piece of paper, you know. Yeah, it's like a fucking crazy. concept. You know? I know. It doesn't really exist, and people die and kill for it, and, you know. It's awful. So, uh, and Quadra, you know, brings the, this main question, and why do you believe in the stuff do you believe? You know, why you defend those ideas, especially, you know, and why you attack people that have a different pe uh, different point of view about s the same events or, or facts, you know. I mean, we should respect that you know, and not attack and, and see the, all the rest of the world wrong and I'm the only guy right just because I know what I know, mm -hmm. you know. You know, it's just one, you know, point of view uh, according to the school you went or university or what kind of movies do you watch and what kind of conversations you have in your family and stuff, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, Quadra talks about that. That's amazing. Now, talking about Quadra and the artwork, who did the artwork? Because that's amazing, too. You guys should mint those coins, actually, I think, and everybody should get one. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's what we're going to do for sure. I mean, it's a great item and it's a great icon, you know. And uh, it, was, it was an artist in Brazil called Cristiano Machado. He's an amazing artist that uh, I found together with a friend of mine, Marcos Hermes, which is a photographer, mm -hmm. that uh, we together, you know, tried to find this artist to, to portray the cover, and, and he did an amazing job. You sure did. All right, we're going to check out a track here. Here's Isolation. Let's crank it up.
right, that was isolation. You can un uh, completely understand by that track the concept of this album and what you were explaining about Quadra, and you guys are so, like right on with the concept. Sorry, uh, could, could you repeat, please? I, I lost a little bit. Oh, that's okay. I said with isolation there, that track that we just played, you guys are spot on with the concept of the album. We can understand that in the lyrics of that track and even with the video, it's really good. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we divided the album in four parts, you know, really to, to bring uh, all the elements and a few elements that we use throughout our career. You know, in the first part of the album, uh, side A, like a, a double vinyl release, you know, side A was more connected to the trash era, to the old school Sepultura, like, you know, Beneath the Remains, uh, Rise. Uh, side B was more connected to our uh, percussion and groovier side from KZD, Roots and Against and all that stuff, you know. Uh, side C was more connected to our uh, instrumental world, you know. Uh, Inquisition Symphony, The Abyss, you know, the stuff we did with the Chavantes Drive and especially Iceberg Dances for our last album, which we had a great time not only writing and, and recording, but also on stage, you know, performing. Right. So Side C is more connected to the instrumental world, you know. And Side D more connected to the song Machine Messiah, which is slower pace, um, more, more melody on the vocals and stuff like that. And we did the cover of, uh, uh, massive attack as well, Angel. You know, we'd have that atmosphere as well. So uh, we kind of divided the album in, in, in that uh, four parts, so we could really represent a little bit of what we did in the past. Plus, of course, you know, the attitude and the riffing and the energy of today. You know, awesome. So it releases on February seventh. Where can it be found yes. when it's releasing? And where can everyone find you when you're on this awesome new tour that you're headlining? Yes, uh, the album come out uh, February 7th, uh, we will come out February 7th to Nuclear Blast, you can find anywhere, uh, like physical, we're going to put out uh, many different formats, including vinyl, we're going to put out also a, a special package with the, the CD, with uh, an extra CD with 8 tracks from uh, our live show, 30th anniversary show in Sao Paulo in 2015. And, um, and also the Sepultura documentary, Sepultura Endurance, you know, which we didn't, uh, were able to put on Netflix, uh, outside South America and Latin America. And now we'll be able to, you know, to put this, uh, documentary on the, on this next release. So people will have the chance to, to see, you know, it'd be great. And, um, and digitally, of course, you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we're going to go on tour now in March and April in North America with the Sacred Reich, Crowbar, and Art of Shock, which is an amazing, beautiful package. I'm so happy, excited about this tour, you know. It's going to be great. That is. That's going to be a great tour. So, um, I know one more quick question. I know you're short for time. Where in the world have you not traveled yet? Wow, we've been to 80 countries in 35 years. You know, that's a, a pretty amazing number <laughs> so far. And uh, But, you know, there are a few places we didn't go, like Alaska or Iceland, you know. Mm -hmm. that I know there are shows there and stuff. So hopefully with Quadra, we could achieve those uh, those countries that we never, uh, you know, be able to, to go, you know, up to now. All right. So can you give us a shout-out for the radio station? I'll tell you what to say, and you can just yell it out for us. Sure. Okay, just say your name, your band name. You're tuned into MetalDevastationRadio.com, where metal reigns supreme. Metal Devastation? Yep, Radio.com. MetalDevastationRadio.com. Okay. Hey all, here's Andreas Kisser from Sepultura, and you are on MetalDevastationRadio.com. Destroy! Thank you so much. Have an awesome tour, and I know you, you can always check back with us anytime. And thank you. Just enjoy. It sounds like you are. Hell yeah! Oh yes, excellent. That's the interview. most important. All right, thank everybody. You very much, man. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. You too, man. Thank you. Oh, and hell yeah, kick-ass interview, as always, with DJ Thunderous and also Andreas. Uh, Sepultura is an awesome band. This next album is going to be dropping today, February 7th, 2020. And uh, check right through uh, uh, nuclearblast.de or nuclearblastusa to get your copy of Quadra. But right now, uh, we're going to finish up with this last track. And uh, this is the off of their new album. Just as isolation was, uh, this is going to be last time. So crank it up, Metal Devastation Radio. Cheers and stay tuned. <laughs> 